Laura the Library Lady and welcome to this episode. Today I will be reading The Secret to Freedom by Marcia Vaughn and illustrated by Larry Johnson. And it has a wonderful cover page. I was 10 years old the first time I went to stay with my great aunt Lucy. We'd shoo cows from the field, cool our feet in the river, then sit in the kitchen chit-chatting like a pair of summer sparrows. I remember one day we were shelling peas into a chip blue bowl while the curtains billowed in the breeze beside us. Suddenly, my gaze caught a splash of color on the wall. Aunt Lucy, I said, why do you keep that old scrap of cloth hanging over there? Aunt Lucy split open a pot and chased the peas out with her thumb. Child, she said, that's a story I haven't told in a long, long time. So we see the little girl with her great Aunt Lucy. And they're working on the peas after they dealt with the cows. And I love this, the language that Miss Vaughn uses. It's so beautiful, so poetic, and it draws pictures in your mind. And any of the words that your child may not be familiar with, please go over with them, over the uh, words with them. Also, I love the fact that they shoo the cows. If your child, if you live in an urban area, what does that mean? Uh, and cooling our feet in the river. Now I want to just point out, if you have a pool or you live near a natural or a man-made body of water, number one, make sure your child knows water safety, whether it's a pool, a river, a pond. And number two, your child should not be in those places unsupervised and your children should know how to swim if, they're, if they have access to bodies of water. Um, you don't hear about it as much now, but when I was growing up, and especially when my father was growing up, children drowned all the time during the summer because it would get so hot. So I know that doesn't happen much today, but I couldn't read the book and couldn't read this page without saying, please be careful around bodies of water, even if you're a boater in your experience. No one wants to lose their child that way, or anyone. And um, you may want to talk about the curtains billowed in the breeze, especially if you live in air conditioning. And what does it mean to, um, you know, split peas? And, and, you know, what's a pea pod? That's something that uh, my generation would do growing up, but we don't really do that much. Some people have no access to fresh produce, and some people do. It just depends on what, where you live and what you have access to. But that's a good talking point. Want to make sure that you see the splash of color on the wall? It's right here. It's a piece of cloth. It's going to point that out. When I was about your age, I was a slave. Property of folks named Briggs down in South Carolina. Seeing as I was born with a lame leg, the overseer said I was no good for field work. So I got sent to scrub clothes out in the hot sun till my hands were raw and my back ate like an old plow muse. From where I work, I look across the plantation, trying to find Papa stooped over in the cotton fields. Sometimes I snatch a glance up at the big house where Mama was seamstress. Though I couldn't see my brother, Albert, I heard the cling bang of his hammer as he worked at the blacksmith's anvil. So... She had a job, and today with washing machines, laundry mats, 
Maybe we wash a few things by hand. What does it mean to wash clothes? Especially, um, and then whose clothes is she washing? Washing. She doesn't say, but it's, she says she would be there all day long. So obviously she was washing a lot of clothes. And what is a seamstress? That was her mother's job. And what's a blacksmith? And what was her father doing out in the field? And what was field work? So this one page, depending on the age of your child and where you live, your child may have no idea what any of this means. And that's okay. That's why we're reading and you're spending time with your child. Now, I did vin visit a blacksmith shop. I visited more than one. But this uh, spring, this past spring, I was at the Sandy Springs Museum uh, on Route 108 in Montgomery County here in Maryland. And that particular museum has a full operational blacksmith shop. And I spent about 30 minutes in there talking with the blacksmith. And he's retired. He's in his late 60s or early 70s. And that's what he does full time now. And I think it's great because it's historical and it's artistic. Now he doesn't do the horseshoes. He said that's actually a different kind of blacksmithing. Uh, what he specializes in is making household wares, like things that, like doorknobs, hangers, well not the kind of hangers we have, uh, pots and pans and you know, things that women and men cooked with. And he also made weapons and he also made, um, the bullets for the weapons and so the time period in which he's serving is still during colonial times and so he said any time that there was any kind of skirmish or any kind of altercation everyone would come to the blacksmith if you needed to cook you had to go to the blacksmith if you need something or nails made for your house you went to your blacksmith and i think that's why uh, uh president jefferson had his own blacksmith shop at monticello because that that blacksmith was essential. So her brother, even though he was a slave, he was a skilled laborer. And so was her mother because she was a seamstress. That means she made clothes. So back in the time of slavery, you, just, you could go to a store, but clothes were hard to make or they would take a long time. Sometimes they were imported from England or France, but that would take a very long time because they came by boat. But if you could see a picture or if a, if a mistress of the house, the master's wife wanted something, their children wanted something, they had a person who could sew. And a person who sews knows fashion or is told what to do. They know math or at least know how to cu calculate to the best of their knowledge. And they're usually, at this time, they were sewing everything by hand and everything had to be with very small stitches. And so all these, and her father, uh, he says he did field work. So we don't, I'm looking at the picture, it looks like cotton, but it could also be, of course, tobacco, those big cash, uh, um, prop, cash crops. So that's something to talk about. Here's the next page. Times were full of trouble. War was coming. Sure enough, folks up north talking about putting an end to slavery. Folks down south bound to keep it. Long about that time, the overseer came to our quarters. Bessie Thomas, he said, slave traders taking you to be at the auction block today. What about Elbert and Lucy, Papa asked. They staying here, the overseer snapped. Just you two getting sold off. Saddest thing I ever saw was my parents being led off to let off on that wagon. Knew I never see mama smile or hear papa's laugh again. Master, he buys us, he sells us, he beat us, work us till we died. Oh, how I wished things could be different. So a lot of things are um, talked about on this page too. I'm sorry, I don't know if I showed you the picture of her being a washerwoman, I'm sorry. So here's the previous page. That's the main house or plantation. That's her being the washerwoman. And we see the field. And then um, here we see her parents being led away. And that's a pretty serious topic. What is the auction block? And what does it mean to be property? And to have your family sold away from you? Um, what does that feel like? You know, how does how do you explain that? 
So um, I'm going to read this page. Albert felt the same as me, and he came up with a plan. Whenever he was loaned out to work at another plantation, he'd find out all he could about the Underground Railroad. One time he come home with a burlap sack slung over his shoulder. Lucy, he said, I got the secret to freedom inside this sack. Blacksmith over at the Mulby Plantation gave it to me. Albert's eyes danced as he emptied the sack on the table. What you got here, Albert, I said, is a bunch of raggedy old quilts. And here's her brother, Albert. And here she is. And you see the quilts. Now, once again, this has a lot of concepts to it. Here he is, Albert. He's a blacksmith. He's loaned out. So that means his master let him work for another white person who didn't own slaves. And that white person would pay for his time. The thing is, many slaves who were hired out got to keep a portion of what they made for their masters and over years of time would buy their freedom and the freedom of their loved ones if they could. And then another concept is the Underground Railroad. And I remember learning about that and trying to figure out what it meant. How can a railroad be underground? And why was it underground? And then finding out it wasn't a real railroad, even though it was. So that's a great uh, discussion to have with your children. So many historical things you can go to and see. And then there was the secret to freedom and these old quilts. So you have quilting involved, which is very strong in the African-American community and other communities as well. But the important thing to remember, quilting was a way to show the way to freedom. And there is a museum here in Anne Arundel County, Maryland, right by the NSA. And it's all about encryption and secret codes and how we you know, spied on the Germans during World War II. And in this museum, with all of these gadgets and all of this science, hangs this huge quilt. Because the quilt, its symbols, would tell these people who were slaves how to escape to freedom. So the book goes on. You have to see what happens with the little girl and her brother. I won't say any more. But on the back of the book, there are all kinds of patterns for quilt squares. And each symbol means something. Like this one right here means crossroads. And um, each one of them means something. And that's why Albert had to learn what the symbols meant. And if he had the quilt, he and his sister could get to freedom. Now, we're also right. Uh, this The war is about to start. The Civil War. That's how the book opens. And I heard a statistic that after the Civil War, Thousands of former slaves, even if they were living in freedom during the war, walked all over the United States to find their loved ones, even if they didn't know they were alive or dead. Sometimes people have been separated for over 20 years, and one man walked almost 6,000 miles to find his wife. Wow, can you imagine that? So this is a great book. Of course, I'm going to recommend that you get it for your family library. Own a copy. You'll love it. Uh, you can get it online or, on the, uh, or at your local bookstore. And she is also, the author's also talked about on Scholastic.com. And of course, where's my favorite spot to get a book? You got it. The public library. So check it out. The Secret to Freedom by Marisa Vaughn and illustrations by Larry Johnson. I know you'll enjoy it. Until next time, this is the library lady. Happy reading!